Hi. In the previous video, I talked about the factors of false positives and false negatives, and I mentioned that we had to know these factors in order to avoid exclusion of good candidates for refractive surgery. In the following video, I am going to start talking about the five-step practical approach, which consists of, first, determination of the spherical equivalent and total refraction. The spherical equivalent is important for K-reading calculations, while the total refraction is important for thickness calculations. In step number two, I'm going to show you how to study the risk factors on corneal tomography when you have only the four composite maps and you don't have an access to the other maps. In step number three, I'll show you how to do the calculations in terms of thickness and K readings. In step number four, we have to study astigmatic disparity, and in step number five, we have to study both eyes. But before going into details, we have to study the principles of modern laser profiles in myopia treatment, myopic astigmatism treatment, hyperopia treatment, hyperopic astigmatism treatment, and mixed astigmatism treatment. And in order to simplify the matter, I'm going to consider the optical zone 6.5 millimeters as a default in order to calculate the central ablation depth to be 15 microns per minus one diopter of sphere. This is myopic ablation profile to correct minus four diopters sphere. As you see, the maximum ablation depth is central and it is 60 microns because we multiplied the minus four by 15 microns because of the 6.5 millimeter optical zone as I mentioned. As you see here, the maximum ablation depth is central while it decreases towards the periphery. So rule number one, in myopic treatment, the ablation profile is central. This is the hyperopic ablation profile to correct plus two diopters sphere. As you see, it is an annular ablation profile in which the central ablation depth is zero, while the maximum ablation depth is peripheral. And if we multiply the plus two by 15 microns, it will be 30 microns at the periphery. So rule number two, in hyperopia, the ablation profile is peripheral. So whatever the hyperopic amount of correction, the central ablation depth will be zero. This is the ablation profile for hyperopic astigmatism. This is an example of plus two diopter cylinder at 90. Of course, this is with the rule astigmatism. Why? Because the flat axis or the weak axis is 180. This is why we need the cylinder to be oriented on the vertical axis. Now, there are two options for the laser profile to correct this astigmatism. Either to flatten the steep axis, which is 90, or to steepen the flat axis, which is 180. But modern laser profiles use the flat axis to treat the plus cylinder. So the ablation will be at the periphery of the flat axis in order to steepen it and to strengthen it, as in this example. This is why we can see zero ablation depth in the center and 30 microns at the periphery of the flat axis in order to correct the plus two, because plus two multiplied by 15 microns equals 30 microns, while the ablation depth is zero on the vertical axis. So as a rule, in hyperopic astigmatism, the ablation profile is peripheral on the flat axis, and this is very important to memorize in mind. This is a case of simple myopic astigmatism, which is minus two diopter cylinder at 180. The computer of the machine will understand this equation in the plus cylinder formula. So it will convert it into minus two sphere plus two cylinder at 90. And it will build the ablation profile based on this equation, not on the minus cylinder equation, as you will see now. So minus two sphere plus two cylinder at 90 will be, this is minus two sphere ablation profile plus plus two at 90 ablation profile equals this ablation profile to correct the minus two 
sphere minus two cylinder at 180. So the central ablation depth will be 15 microns because of the minus two sphere and zero microns because of the plus two cylinder at 90. So the total is 15 microns. This is the ablation profile again. You can see that the central is 30 microns while the peripheral is 32 at the flat axis. While it is zero at the periphery of the vertical axis or the steep axis. Now, as you see, it is elongated over the flat axis. The ablation profile is elongated over the flat axis. So whatever the flat axis is, the ablation profile will be oriented over this axis. This is an example of against the rule astigmatism, minus two at 90. As you see, the ablation profile is oriented vertically. This is a case of oblique astigmatism, minus two at 60. As you see, the ablation profile is oriented over the flat axis, which is 60. We will take another example of myopic astigmatism. This is compound myopic astigmatism, minus four sphere, minus two cylinder at 180. But the computer will not understand it as it is. The computer will un understand it as minus six sphere plus two cylinder at 90. And it will use this equation to build the ablation profile as you will see now. So it will be a combination of minus six sphere plus two at 90 cylinder in order to correct minus four minus two at 180. Therefore, the central ablation depth will be 90 for the minus six, zero for the plus two equals 90 for the final correction. Now, if you look at the 90 microns and the minus four sphere, you will see that they are not corresponding to each other because the minus four is corrected by ablating 15 multiplied by four equals 60 microns. So the 90 microns correspond to the algebraic sum of the sphere and cylinder, which is minus six in this example. So remember this, the final ablation depth corresponds to the algebraic sum of sphere and cylinder. This is again the ablation profile for minus four minus two at 180. As you see, it is elongated over the flat axis. It is 90 micron in the center and it decreases towards the periphery, but it is elongated over the flat axis because as you see, it is zero at the periphery of the vertical axis. So rule number four is in my pick astigmatism treatment, the ablation profile will be elongated over the flat axis. This is mixed astigmatism, which is plus two sphere minus four cylinder at 180, but the computer will understand it as minus two sphere plus four cylinder at 90. And it will build the ablation profile based on that. So it will be minus two sphere plus four at 90 equals plus two minus four at 180. So the ablation depth will be the central ablation depth, of course, will be 30 microns for the minus two, zero microns for the plus four at 90 equals 30 microns. So if we apply the rule that the final ablation depth is for the algebraic sum of sphere and cylinder, the algebraic sum of the sphere and cylinder in this case is plus two with minus four is minus two. This is why minus two when it is apply, uh, multiplied by 15 microns, it, it equals 30 microns. This is called the total refraction. So from here, it came this ex expression, which is total refraction. So the total refraction is the algebraic sum of sphere and cylinder in order to calculate the ablation depth. And this is the thickness rule for calculation. So this is the ablation profile for the plus two minus four at 180. As you see, it resembles bow tie. So whenever you see a bow tie laser profile, it corresponds to mixed astigmatism and it is oriented over the flat axis. So always the flat axis, but the ablation depth, the maximum ablation depth is at corneal periphery um, at the, uh, over the flat axis while it is 30 microns in this example 
in the center of the cornea. So rule number five is in mixed astigmatism, there will be a bow tie shape of the ablation profile, but it is oriented on the flat axis. So the rules of ablation profile treatment are in myopia, it will be disciform and central. In myopic astigmatism, it will be elongated on the flat axis. In hypermetropia, it is annular peripheral. In hyperopic astigmatism, it is peripheral on the flat axis. And in mixed astigmatism, it is a bow tie on the flat axis. Now, in the next video, I'm going to continue the five step practical approach by going into more details uh, regarding the five steps. Thank you for listening.